Events. 
This is a fairly clear-cut boundary. Let's talk about a contrasting boundary. And that's the boundary of land use Because as we know, we humans use land for all different purposes. Agriculture is a common one, forestry, recreation, land absorbs carbon, it provides us with fresh water and so on. But there is no global indicator. There's no carbon dioxide for land. There's no one single thing we can measure. Land is used in very many different ways in very many parts of the planet. How can you possibly come up with a global boundary for land? And do we see any sharp changes if we change land too much? For example, in climate, if we change, if we warm too much, big ice sheets melt. It's a very big geophysical change that we can see. So it's much more difficult to define a planetary boundary for land. But it's better to look at land in more of a resilience framework, whereas it's a slow variable that may erode the resilience of other systems on the planet. So here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to say, how much land should we clear for intensive agriculture? It's about 12% now. And we're estimating that we shouldn't go probably much above 15%. Because when you do, this is an interesting point, when you do, you start using up all of Earth's productive land. And when you go beyond that, you have to clear very much more from, for an incremental gain in agriculture. And so you start hitting some sort of a threshold for global land use. You can take it even farther like uh, colleagues at PIC in uh, Germany have done, by looking at the global land as a global system, irrespective of national boundaries, irrespective of how people are using it now, and saying, where is the most productive land? That should be a global agricultural commons. Where is most of the biodiversity? That should be a global nat natural ecosystem reserve. Where is the best place to generate energy from land? Through biofuels and so on. Where is the best place to store carbon? Can we get a matrix of global land cover that will, feed, will, that will uh, meet all of those ecosystem services and yet continue to provide the broader global ecosystem services in terms of climate stabilization? So this is a trickier boundary because it requires many, many local decisions by very many different groups of people. But it has to add up to something that makes sense globally in terms of how land, the role that land plays in the Earth system. Well, these are two types of planetary boundaries. So far, we've identified nine of them. In addition to nitrogen and phosphorus, we have ocean acidification, water use, chemical pollution, and so on. The point being, we have to understand more about the limits of our planet, learning to put safe boundaries to where humanity should not go. But within those boundaries, we have all sorts of possibilities to develop further.